Hi, my name is Chetan Parkin. Welcome to my Facebook Live. Today I'm going to be going through the eighth of nine centers in the human design chart, having a look at the root center. If you have a copy of a chart with you, that'll be very good. So uh, then you'll be able to follow along and see exactly what it is I'm talking about relating to your design. In the human design life chart, the root center at the bottom of the chart gives us the closest contact to life on earth and what happens within us and through us not only for us to survive but also for us to prosper. Physiologically the root center relates to the adrenal glands and the release of adrenaline gives us that powerful chemical impulse that instantly courses through our bodies when we are under threat. In the dark ages and before adrenaline had its almost permanent function to keep us alive, providing a burst of energy that gave us an instant edge to be able to dodge, race, jump and climb to avoid predators and life-threatening situations. In these times, we might occasionally face sudden life-threatening challenges, that is unless we're in a police state or a war zone, and we'll certainly be aware of an instant charge coursing through our bodies as adrenaline is released when a threat shows up. However, and for most people, the more modern equivalent of adrenaline's release is probably in meeting deadlines, preparing for an important performance or an interview, or perhaps racing for an appointment through rush hour traffic. And though, although all of these instances might have an apparent high level of importance, they are rarely going to be real life or death scenarios. So it is possible that this source of survival energy has modified, perhaps even been downgraded, in its original apparent importance for us. Just as the crown center aims our attention to the sky and potentially lofty inspirations, the root center aims our attention towards Mother Earth and our connectedness to being here in physical form and coupled to life in our own particular way to the inherent parameters of this planet. If we forget or cannot make this important connection to the Earth wherever we are, then we find that life here is difficult, to say the least. Sooner or later, we all get to know the feeling of being uprooted and placed in uncertain circumstances. One thing is quite clear about this root center is that it provides direct pressure to interact with life. And as we can see in the life chart, this pressure does not connect directly to most of the other centers. It makes no direct connection to the self-centre, our centre of identity and trajectory, nor the heart centre, the source of our wishes and willfulness, nor to the throat centre, where we get to express ourselves, and has no connection to our thoughts or mental inspirations in the mind and crown centres. The root centre is going to act on only three possible centres. It connects to the spleen centre on the left side of the life chart, the instinctive intuitive awareness centre, and our source of health and well-being the immune system, and also the center that alerts us to potential dangers through visceral fears. It might connect us to the sacral center, the source of life force energy and the center for furthering life through cross-pollination. And it connects to the emotion center, the source of our life experiences of pleasure and pain, and ultimately when we are paying attention to our emotional awareness. And as we will see, there is a substantial difference in how the root center's pressure gets to play out depending on which course it takes and to which of these three centers it connects. If you have a defined root center, you're someone who has consistent access to adrenaline and the means to literally turn it on or off to use it or not as a need arises. You might find that you can easily handle pressures and that any form of deadline or emergency is part of your normal day. You might find that you're continuously running on adrenaline and even living in an environment that is aligned with stress. With a defined root center, you might also observe that you can trigger pressures in other people, motivating them to be more closely engaged with their activities and to meet timelines that otherwise might not seem important to them. If you're not careful, this will show up in actually stressing people out in ways that they will ultimately come to resent. If you have an undefined root center, you have the means to be wise about the nature of pressured situations. In that just because there seems to be a need to rush, there isn't in reality. 
In a world that seems to be getting faster and faster, this is something important to appreciate. Being conditioned to live in a permanently stressful lifestyle is going to affect your well-being sooner or later. And so for anyone with an undefined or open root centre, knowing relaxation techniques is essential. Whether that be through conscious breathing, releasing, meditation, yoga, or other forms of quickly bringing the body back to a relaxed state. With an open root centre, you might not even be aware of how much pressure is being applied to your world through the people around you. And so at times, you might find yourself in extremely pressured situations without appreciating the effect this is having on you. Human design is always a guide for us. When we pay close attention to our type and authority to know who and what requires our attention, exactly when and how much, and who and what to avoid altogether. On the left side of the root centre, there are three gates aiming towards the spleen centre, each of which gives an impulse that relates to our physical well-being. Each of these three channels has the potential to pump the lymph system in our bodies. So for those people who have any of these channels in their design, exercising or fueling an accelerated metabolism is recommended. In the root centre, gate 58 of joyous vitality, or what I call the vital spark, gives the impulse of joy in any activity. When connecting to gate 18, calling finding, called finding remedy through the channel of judgment, it can energize and mark the improvements we bring to our lives as we joyfully develop our practices and polish our systems. Gate 38, called Opposition, challenges our standards as humans as we measure what is empowering and what is not. When linked to Gate 28, called the Game Player of Life through the channel of struggle, it energizes an environment that challenges the foundational qualities of life by embracing individual human rights over rigid systems. Gate 54, called Ambition, drives us to go beyond any perceived limitations, to follow an inner drive to achieve both on material and spiritual levels. When linked to Gate 32, called Duration at the Spleen Center through the channel of transformation, the push to expand one's inner gifts and energy through an entrepreneurial output is energized. Between the root center and the sacral center there are the three tiny channels with big effects in our lives. These channels are called format channels in that they determine the ways in which anything in our life is going to happen. The gates in the root center give, these, give the pressure for these potential channels to affect our lives. In the top left hand corner, gate 53 of New Beginnings applies the impulse to get something going. And when linked with gate 42 of growth and increase in the sacral center, open cycles of activity that commence, continue, and conclude in a specific time frame. Gate 60, called limitation, calls attention to basic issues in life that need attention, and that once mastered, become a springboard for potential and dramatic expansion that can take place through gate 3, implementing the new in novel and empowering ways. Gate 9, called Applied Details, earmarks all manner of minutia that need to be in place for a progressive future outcome and is given time and energy by Gate 52 of Mountain and Stillness until all is in place and projects can proceed. On the right side of the root center, Gate 41, Imagination, opens the possibility for any and all life experiences. Many times a dream will be illusionary but many times a dream can become a reality. Linked with Gate 30 of Desires in the Emotion Center, the channel of recognition aims towards new experiences without any guarantee of success other than to have the experience itself. Been there, done that, next. Gate 39, called Provocation, tantalizes and flirts with life, triggering spirit and abundance in Gate 55 in the Emotion Center through the channel of the full emotional spectrum that touches the ecstasies and the agonies of life in a kaleidoscope of dramas, moods and often outrageous creativity. Gate 19, called Approach and the Pressure to Find Inclusion, reaches into life to touch on the needs of the world and finds unity or separation at Gate 49, called Revolution, 
through the channel of sensitivity at the emotion centre. A final note on the root centre. When looking at the human design wheel, representing our placement within the various star fields around us, it becomes apparent that the root centre contains many opposites, in that what sits on one side of the sky around us has its exact energetic opposite on the other side. In the human design system, one of the components incorporated within its mix is the presence and wisdom of the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching. Each hexagram is composed of six lines, and these, these lines are either solid or broken. And in simplistic terms, a solid line is extrovert, or termed yang, and a broken line is introvert, or termed yin. When looking at the hexagrams composing the root center, the majority of the gates have their energetic opposites within that same center. For example, gate 54, ambition, energetically opposes or balances gate 53, new beginnings, on the opposite side of the wheel or the sky around us. Gate 58, joyous vitality, energetically or opposes or balances gate 52, of mountain and stillness. And gate 38, opposition to poor life standards, energetically opposes or balances gate 39, provocation, and an opening to our spirited nature on the other side of the sky from us. The odd gates here that do not have their opposite in the root centre are gate 60, limitations, whose opposite is gate 56 of stimulation, called the wanderer and the storyteller in the throat centre. Gate 19, approach and sensitivity to the needs of family and community in life, whose opposite is gate 33 called retreat, also a storyteller gate of real life experiences, is also at the throat centre. And gate 41, imagination and the commencement of our dreams and visions for life, whose opposite is gate 31, influence that inspires our activities towards a bold future, also at the throat centre. On closer inspection of each of the nine hexagrams in the root centre, the bottom three lines of each hexagram is based on the premise of either stillness or joyfulness implying that whatever we do in life and whatever pressures push us forward needs to be based in either an inner observer's standpoint of stillness or come from a place of inner joy. So viewed correctly, this adrenaline system of ours is capable to propel us into and through amazing life experiences from which will come great stories and directives to share with our world. Who does not enjoy being involved in an authentic adventure. In our next talk, and the last in this series of the nine centers in the Human Design Life Chart, we'll be looking at the emotion center and where we touch and store our feelings. In the time between, use your root center well, be still, be watchful of your actions, and be joyous. All the best, see you next time. Bye for now.